Q brings us to the quest for the historical Jesus in our ABCs of modified theology. The quest for the historical Jesus is a topic that admittedly I am both intrigued and frustrated by. Now you may want to chalk this up to my evangelical background, but I sometimes feel like a teenager in the midst of drama. They drive me nuts. I hate listening to them. What do they say? Tell me everything. I am both attracted to and repelled by their work and their findings. I'm leery of their process. I'm confused by some of their conclusions. And simultaneously, I am fascinated by their scholarship and their insights. So this movement is usually credited to the work of Albert Schweitzer in his 1910 book, The Quest for the Historical Jesus, where he reviewed two centuries of scholarship and put forward some conclusions about what scholars had in fact found about the Jesus of Nazareth as he lived in the first century, but also the problem of finding a modern image of Jesus that flavored much of the research itself. Now, after Schweitzer, much of the project was abandoned and it has recently shown up in sort of a minimalist expression which are, what are the bare facts that we can know or that can be validated about this first century person? Stanley Grentz, a deceased theologian that I really respect, um, put it this way, that Jesus never made any messianic claims. This is part of the conclusions of this group. He never predicted his death or resurrection, and he never instituted the sacraments that are followed by the church. Gonzalez in the Pocket Dictionary of Theological Terms says that much of this was projected onto him by his disciples and the gospel writers in the early churches, that the true historical Jesus, in contrast, preached a simple, largely ethical message as capsulized in the dictum of fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of humankind. A modern manifestation of this is the quest that we see in groups like the Jesus Seminar, and I am deeply indebted to the work of historical Jesus scholars and their research. I never knew so many things when I was an evangelical pastor, for instance, like empire, which we covered in E. It has been both eye-opening and a little disorienting to engage their work. It, there's a sort of spiritual whiplash that can come from just not knowing so much of this. So while I have problems with some of their conclusions, I am grateful for the depth of their engagement and the sincerity of their scholarship. My faith has been enriched and informed by the, in ways that I, I just couldn't have imagined. There's just something about the entire enterprise that gets under my skin a little bit and rubs me the wrong way. Is it possible to be grateful for a pebble in your shoe as you journey? I find myself thinking, I don't like where you all take this but I need to know what you know. I just want to draw different conclusions than you do. This, of course, is the danger of venturing outside your comfort zone. So why does it get under my skin so much? My agitation stems from three areas. The reductive maneuver of enlightenment rationale, the arrogance of assuming that we know more, and the molding of Jesus into our image. First, this reductive move of the Enlightenment rationale is pervasive in our time. You always know when you're dealing with this mentality, it's employed in phrases like nothing but. So emotions and feelings are explained away as nothing more than synapses in our brain. Or sexuality is nothing more than hormones and chemicals. Religion is just the projection of our greatest hopes and fears onto the screens of the heavens. Biology, psychology, sociology, religion, so many fields are reduced down to their lowest common denominator and then summarily dismissed or explained away. And I object to this reductive dismissal in favor of what I prefer is a more complicated, nuanced, and emergent exploration of areas by examining the ways that the phenomenon we see our expressions of a complex set of interactions and overlapping manifestations that are mutually impacted by one another. I don't want to reduce something down to its lowest common denominator. I want to inflate it with air 
and insight and exploration and see all that it can be. There is just something difficult and maybe a little suspicious about trying to get behind the text in order to distill the real Jesus away from the presentation or the representation of Jesus in the text of Scripture. Which brings me to my second objection. There is an odd arrogance in historical Jesus scholarship that dismisses or explains away what we see and hear in the gospel text. How do you really know Jesus ever said that? So I'm leery of importing and imposing our modern expectations on ancient figures, admittedly. However, <laughs> the minute I start looking at the four Gospels that we have in the canon of Scripture, I begin to clearly see that the synoptic authors or the communities that, that birthed them have different agendas and that John's Gospel is almost an entirely novel in all of its aspects, many of its aspects. So perhaps my hesitation is because I was raised with a harmonized version, a harmonized presentation of the gospel where they were all made to be unified and coherent as one gospel. And all of the differences were dismissed and explained away. I've become very aware that Luke's Jesus is different than John's cosmic Christ and there is something sort of unsettling about that. My third objection is that the end product of historical Jesus research often creates a Jesus that is remarkably similar to us. Apparently, Jesus is highly moldable, depending on which of the threads in the tapestry you pull on and highlight. You can get an imperial Jesus who reinforces empire. You can get a revolutionary who's anti you can get a capitalist Jesus, even a Marxist one. There's a hallmark version of Jesus who told little boys and girls to be nice to each other. But you also get a sage shaman who tapped into the supernatural realm that manifests in miracles from healing to multiplying food to commanding the very forces of nature. So in conclusion, the work behind the text is difficult, but probably necessary. We just want to do it with some humility, especially some epistemic agnosticism, as I call it. Just being careful with how we know what we know. So we need to be careful that we don't make Jesus into our image, which, let's be honest, dabbles in a form of idolatry that we see today. We want to avoid that. But once those three cautions are in place, we begin to engage in a vital and furtive, fruitful, work of excavating and renovating a powerful and important figure in history who has been buried under layers of dirt throughout history.